Hi guys, I got a digital multimeter from UNIT and it came by Vitacon.draw. They are our sponsors for this product review and also Vitacon.draw is the supplier of UNIT multimeters for Romania. So whoever are there, you can buy any kind of multimeter from them. They have many kinds. I watched some videos in many languages, in Russian, in Spanish, in English. Um, in all the videos, I found the same thing. It looks like or the thing is real or everybody is copying and pasting the same video. So I decided to make a research myself because I was looking for a multimeter for my channel. So between the multimeters I found, I found out this is one of the best multimeters I can use here. And let's make the product review to see if I am right or many of the videos we watched before, they were not fair. Let's start in bulb DC. First thing I'm going to use is a voltage reference. Guys, please be careful. Do not believe everything you watch in YouTube. I will tell you why. This is my voltage reference and supposedly it's 0 0.0025 plus minus of the voltage. But remember guys, this chip is in a breadboard and it becomes noise. Also, I don't have any guarantee of the happy numbers because the files that you will watch at the end of those numbers are affected by the temperature and the parts per million of tolerance. So whatever looks like a happy numbers and every time you watch a YouTuber showing produce comparisons and calibrations, you better get your own calculator and make your numbers about it. Don't believe everything they say. You have to read. Other ways, you will believe it. I will add other multimeter to it. So if I compare the numbers, it means the multimeter is in the specifications and also in the calibration. So it's important guys, always when you're going to do something like that, make your own numbers. Don't believe everything you watch. Remember guys, we are the electronics guys. We make numbers, we don't believe stuff. With one kilohertz, two volts RMS, the multimeter is in the specifications. Something I like about this unit is this function, AC plus DC. Let's learn about it. It means on the AC wave, I can get a voltage offset and to rise this wave up or down with the DC level and I can get a measurement of the RMS in the unit T multimeter. Now let's pay attention to it. Zero point five. The wave is in offset with half volts DC. If you pay attention, we already got the RMS voltage reading. Now, let's pay attention if the analog bar is working and if it follows the voltage in the digital display. Every time it accomplishes the digit, the analog bar will mark that digit.
as you can watch, is working absolutely well. Now let's check the millivolts in DC. Supposedly this is the best precision scale in this device. Once again, I'm going to use the function generator because it has less noise level than my power supply. Let's pay attention what the other multimeter has to say. It looks very alike. Now let's go for 100 millivolts. Once again, not too bad. I have here four 200 ohms resistors in 0.1%. Looks very good. Now the buzzer. I hear some complaints that it's very slow. And let's know about it. So, where is the problem? Something that we have to understand, guys, is continuity doesn't mean zero ohms. Continuity means a value between one point to the other, and that value is in resistance. Every time you try continuity, you are not absolutely sure there is a good conduction between one path and the other and I will show you. So you can get 50 ohms between one point and the other and it doesn't mean you have zero ohms between one path and the other. But the truth is, to me, it's fast enough. Maybe we will make another video about this multimeter's functions. Right now, to make this video shorter, I will jump to take a look inside of the multimeter. It's something that I don't like to do in my videos, and I will explain you why. This is what our multimeter looks like. Let's start from the banana connectors. Some people doesn't like the ones with the gap here. They want a total closed cylinder and they want a screw in the top or solder in the, in the top. I don't have any problems with it. Anyhow, the plastic in the rear part will stop the banana connector from entering more than it should be. 
this cap doesn't represent any problem. Anyway, is the banana connector the male, the one who spans to touch the walls? So this connector will not lose its shape. What is important to me in banana connectors is the way I pick up the signal or the voltage or whatever and I bring it to the PCB. The reason is because as more parts I have to ensemble here, I get some resistance in between. And the main problem is to join two different metals like the solder and the copper, we get a voltage drop there. That's the reason why in the bench top multimeters you will find they use a wire uh, making contact and going to the PCB without solder because they don't want to generate that voltage drop in between. That happens in the best ones if you can pay attention to it. So to me, it doesn't represent any problem. It's okay. I don't have any issue with it. Battery connector. It's in thermal tubing. This is the proper way to stop the wire pulling and breaking off the solder on the PCB. For each category, it comes with double insulation. Like any good multimeter, it comes with a PTC. There is provision for two battery stores for the higher voltage scale and for other one for the lowers. Now let's talk about it. Do we really need it? This is a 1000 volt rate multimeter. That means I will need my battery stores to protect my multimeter from higher voltage than that. I don't know about you guys, but on this workbench, the highest voltage I will ever reach is 240 volts RMS. If I will need to protect my multimeter from higher voltage than that, in that case, I will look for another model. This model, you can use it for it but it's not the kind of multimeter that you will bring in your toolbox in your car for industrial electronics bumping around. This is more kind of multimeter that you will use in your electronics laboratory. If I need it, I will put it, but the true, I don't need it. I will never trigger that voltage. But if you're going for more than 1000 volts, okay, put it. There is provision for it. There are voltage chopters with bridge rectifiers and rectifiers in a positive position. It's part of the protection. So you got protection in case of voltage apply it and these devices they will chop for more than 8 milliseconds the peak of voltage until the fuse is gone. There is a gap for protection too. Why this kind of resistors? These resistors are able to dissipate more power. And not only that, they are great, their rounded shape helps them for repetitive poles, so they are good for frequency. Some people complain about the kind of fuses. And you need T listen to their complaints and they change the fuses. 
But guys, views is something more related with what you are doing. As example, I just told you, in my workbench, I work with 250 volts. So if I make a mistake, a fuse for 1000 volts rate can wait longer. So maybe I reconsider about the 1000 volts fuse. Thanks Unity about it, but maybe I, have, I should change or switch for lower rate fuse. That's my case, maybe not yours. Sometimes we have to customize to our needs. I hear some complaints about this path. It's too close to ground. How dangerous could it be? Let's analyze the situation as engineers. We know the spring should be the common or the ground. There is no discussion about it. But what we have to do is to find out what or is this path about or where is it going. Surprise guys, this is the 5 volts. And they come out from the regulator. Can a pad be that close to the ground? Do you remember for each chip we got? We always add a 0.1 microfarad capaci capacitor to suppress the noise between the positive and the negative. Am I right? This capacitor is to suppress the noise. The typical 0.1 microfarads. One side goes to ground and the other goes to the positive. Now, can you tell me what is the gap between the negative and the positive? Right there underneath. And that happens in all the multimeter everywhere any electronics device we have with surface mount technology. So that's the end of the myth and there is not any problem between the positive and the negative right there. 5 volts DC. And in next one is where we do engineering. All the quality engineers watching this, they were waiting for me to try to kill me because the solder there didn't fill all the space. Okay, sorry guys, I do not think I was a quality engineer who has to follow the holy book from manufacturing acceptance and probably that book says that uh, I have to refill this at 50% or 100% if we are talking about class 2 or class 3. That's a technical stuff from manufacturing. But as designer, engineer, or manufacturing engineer, for me what is important is to approach the maximum contact between this wire and the barrier wall. For me it's important that contact because I explain with the banana connector I need this metal to touch the other without the solder to get in between. We are talking about 0 0.005 ohms resistor. So the solder in between is already a resistance. So what I need is more a better contact than a good solder. I need those spaces marked on the drawing. I need that contact is what it makes the whole job. So that's the reason you will always find in good multimeters a gap like that in the solder in a point like this against all the qualifications and requirements from the quality engineers about acceptance.
flux on the PCB. Supposedly, in the industrial process, when we finish the SMT process is when we place the surface mount devices. We go later for the through hole process. Is what most of the time it happens. After that, we are able to wash the board, technically speaking, in the process. Some components do not allow the board to be washed as after they are placed. So in that case, the board will remain with the flux there. Also, when we have reworks, when something has to be repaired or when something has to be adjusted, customized for that board, depends on the requirement of the board, I cannot watch it. So the flux is there and the flux will be neutral after 24 hours. Some of the flux even after 8 hours. So this flux doesn't affect anybody. Even if there was a solder ball there is trapped in the flux and it's better to leave it like that than to try to make a nice looking board and to damage components. As example, uh, critical variable capacitors. As you can watch here, the board was washed but after that was reworked. And that's normal in the industrial process. How close are the springs to the chill? Okay, it doesn't matter. Both should be ground. Why to use a 3.999 blah 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 crystal and not a 4.1? What is giving me more precision. In digital electronics, nothing happens in the moment zero. That's in the good theory, the ideal. But what is going on here is there is a time for rising the signal, a time for falling the signal. So if I take this 3.9999 and I add the rising and falling time I will get the closest value to 4. If I use 4, I have to add the rise and falling timing, so it will be more than 4. AD636 There is a path for a metal can, and they place the plastic one. Which one is better? If I make a review of the data sheet, AD636, it doesn't matter if it is metallic or if it is plastic. What matters is the last digit. Depends on it, the chip will be 0.5% or 1%, independently of the package. To use the metal can, we require one extra process probably hand insertion and hand solder. So it was easier to put the plastic chip in the SMT process. So the machine will do it right and there was no difference more than the complication. Now, if you want more precision, you can customize your chip and you can go for the one with more precision. But I have an advice to you. Two things will happen. Number one, you have to adjust yourself this chip. So you have to calibrate. Number two, it doesn't matter the precision of the chip if the next stage later cannot assimilate the precision of this chip. So in that case, it's better to use the J model and just adjust and trim it here. 
so the precision requires they already got it by adjustment and we make the measurements and it was right now let's go with the dessert did you hear some rumors about this screw? ok, number one the fact that there is a hole on the way doesn't mean that there is not enough metal to cover that hole because this screw passes size to size in a barrel and that barrel, the walls of the barrel are the equivalent of the missing area in the pad so think about it a little bit just simple trigonometry the, that area is already covered so there is no missing area in the surface of this track where do I find the real issue? it's very simple I told you guys I don't like to take off parts any screw in a factory is placed with some special calibrate force the screwdriver has a force and is calibrate and under calibration process if I remove this screw next time I screw it probably I can tie too much and crack the copper on the barrel or the track or I cannot put it tight enough where this screw will not be part of the bridge conduction got it? so it was right until it was done it will be wrong the day that I remove it So far, this is my product review. Um, I like the multimeter, that's the reason I want it. It has many things, we will watch later in another video about it. Defects, yes, the two is on the right side of the bar on the screen. And this is not a defect, but probably I have to reconsider the fuses myself after everybody complains about the ceramic ones missing uh, 1000 volts and um, I should consider fuses probably a uh, fast blow but for 250 volts that's for my case as I told you guys is something that you have to customize to your needs in the same way you have to customize this for your needs too if you need the body store or you don't need it is something optional anyhow the holes are there if you will go near the 1000 volts test because you are developing things um, probably making pulse in high frequency you can consider to add the battery stores so far to me it's a wonderful device and after the product review yes I will use it on my workbench. Thanks guys by watching the video. Do not forget to like, subscribe and to share it too. See you next time.